I just spill something. Sometimes it be like that. Hey, I'm Cortland and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a delicious Easter treat that is well loved by many, many people, hot cross buns. I know there are some haters of dried fruit, so today I'm doing a chocolate chip sort of hot cross bun. I say sort of because I'm not using chocolate chips, but I will get to that a little bit later on. In the meantime, let's get started. So the basis of a hot cross bun that makes it different to other breads and things like that is it is a enriched dough, which means it has a higher addition of fat being eggs and butter, which is delicious. So it sort of falls into that realm of, I guess like a brioche, but not as far. The other thing that makes it really iconic is it is lightly spiced with some cinnamon and some allspice, which makes it really sort of, gives it that festive vibe or flavor to me anyway. So what you're gonna do to start is I am using my KitchenAid again. I just find it a lot easier to have it all needed with my dough hook. You can obviously do it all by hand. You don't need any fancy equipment to be able to do it. So to start in my bowl, I wanna go in with my wet ingredients first. So I've just got some warm milk here. To this, I'm gonna add in an egg that I've lightly beaten, some melted butter, some caster sugar, my dry yeast. Now I'm just gonna give this a quick little mix up before I add in my flour. Avoid myself making a mess. I'm gonna just take my bowl off and add in my flour. Fun fact, I do not sift any flour ever. And the only thing that I would sift is cocoa powder because that gets really clumpy. Don't worry about sifting, it's overrated. Back on to my stand mixer and I am gonna add in my spices as well. So I just have some cinnamon, allspice, orange zest, and a little pinch of salt. I'm gonna put this on now like a low speed to start and then increase it to medium once everything starts to come together. You'll know it's ready once a dough doesn't stick to the sides of the bowl as much. So it'll take about 10 or so minutes. So the dough is coming together, still got a little bit to go. In terms of the chocolate addition to this, so I do have some chocolate that I have roughly chopped up. The reason I like to do this instead of chocolate chips is because you get all of these little pieces that are quite small, some that are bigger, and it almost distributes the chocolate a bit more evenly throughout the dough, which I like. So every bite has a little bit of chocolate. Now, one thing that I would keep in mind is I have just popped this in the fridge to chill it because some of those pieces are really small and fine. They will melt very quickly at a quite a low temperature. So I wanted to keep it really cold. I'm only gonna add it into my dough towards the very end once it's come together a bit more because I don't want it to be melted while I'm working with it. So anyway, I'm gonna keep kneading this until it's done. Now that the dough's pretty much come together, I'm gonna just go in with my chocolate. Now that all the chocolate is incorporated, you can see that there is a little bit of marbling in the dough, which is exactly what I want it to do. That's all those little shards of chocolate that have just lightly sort of melted and colored the dough, which is perfect. And then we're still gonna get those pools of chocolate once the bigger pieces cook in the oven. Now the dough is super soft. This is exactly what you want. Really good elasticity. You don't really have air pockets when you sort of stretch it. Now, all I'm gonna do is pop this into a grease bowl, cover this for about an hour until it is doubled in size and then I will be back. So it's been about an hour and my dough has doubled in size. It is almost filled up the entire bowl and is nice and squishy. So you know it's ready. I've also just lined a sheet tray here with some baking paper. I'm hoping it's big enough that I can fit them all on in one. All I wanna do now is take my dough out of the bowl and just give it a couple of really quick kneads just to knock out some of that excess gas. I'm just gonna use my um, bench scraper to divide this into 12 equal portions.
All right, so they look kind of uneven to me, so I am gonna weigh them out. They should be about 122-ish grams each. Alrighty, perfect. They are all weighed out and measured properly now, so about 122 grams. You can just weigh your dough at the start divided by 12, just so you know roughly how much you're working with. So now what I wanna do is shape these into buns. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can see a lot of people that will sort of like pinch from the outside down into the middle to make the top nice and smooth. I think that's a too hard basket and takes too long. All you wanna do, easiest way to do it, is place your dough down on the bench. You wanna claw your hand over the dough and just so that your palm is gently touching it. And in a circular motion, you're gonna roll the dough while your fingers sort of stay underneath, clawing it in, and your palm is touching the top. And you're just going in a circular motion, and you're done. So you're just gonna pop that on your tray, smooth side up. If you want to, you can do two at once. When putting them on the trays well, you do wanna make sure that you've got a couple of centimeters apart you do want them to eventually touch a little bit when they bake so you get that nice classic pull apart tear away of um, the buns but you don't want them so close together that they cook into one large mass because that's not what we're going for here now that all the buns are rolled out and they are looking super cute i am just going to throw another bit of plastic over the top of them just loosely i do want to give these maybe another half an hour to have a second rise just to make sure they are super fluffy about halfway through that rise, I'm gonna preheat my oven to 180. And also I'm gonna make the drizzle to go on top. So I will be back. So I've just changed the tray that I had them on. I felt like the other one was slightly too big and I wanted them a little bit closer together. Ooh, no. Um, so they have had a second rise now. All I need to do is finish the Drizzle to go over the top and then they're gonna go into the oven. So in a bowl, all I wanna do is combine just some plain flour. And to that, I'm gonna sift in some cocoa powder. And then I'm gonna go in just with some water. And I'm just gonna whisk this together until it makes a nice thick paste. Now what I wanna do is just put this into a piping bag. Um, I only own ginormous piping bags because I buy them in bulk. So don't judge me. And I've just got a tip in there that's just got a little round. Just, you don't need a piping tip. You can just snip the end of a plastic bag or a sandwich bag, whatever you've got on hand. I just find by having the tip in there, it gives me a little bit more control of the shape when it comes out. And when you're piping, you do want to go nice and slow because you want to make sure that you are getting the sides covered as well. So I've piped all my crosses on there. So these are now going to go into the oven for about 20, 22 minutes until they are nice and golden. And here they are out of the oven. They look so good and it smells incredible in here. I really want to dive into one, but I'm very scared about how much I'm going to burn myself. But let's try, shall we? Whew. Look how fluffy that is on the inside. Oh my gosh, it's so hot. The chocolate is like, pockets of lava. And I know I've done the complete wrong thing by like tearing it in half and not doing it the other way, but I don't really care at this point. It tastes just like a hot cross bun. I mean, what is it meant to taste like? It is so, so good. These are absolutely perfect for Easter this weekend. Don't take much at all to put together and they are incredibly delicious. Hope you've all enjoyed this recipe. Give it a go at home. Send me through any photos in the comments if you do. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you all next time.